Welcome back again to another edition of Books and Cooks. Today I'm on my own in my kitchen, so this might be a little bit more difficult. I don't have my cameraman, TJ. So I'm going to try a story called Gluten-Free Ghouls. And the reason I'm choosing this story is because I've been doing a lot of Books and Cooks online, and I've been hearing from a lot of people about how much they enjoy my cooking. And then a couple of people have reached out and said, love your recipes, but we have people in our family that are gluten-free because if they eat foods with gluten in them, it upsets their stomach or it makes their skin not be so good or it makes them be tired. There's a lot of things that happen to people who eat gluten and gluten is a protein found typically in like wheat and barley and rye. So it's things that is found, are found in crackers and pastas and breads and a lot of the baked goods that I do. So, I decided to go online and look for a book to teach you about, a little bit about people who may suffer from gluten insensitivity. It means they can eat certain foods, but not foods that contain gluten. And then I ended up getting a package on my front steps the other day. Let me show it to you. It was a box. And when I opened it up, it had all these wonderful gluten-free baking recipes, or I shouldn't, it did come with recipes, but these are more like um, cake mixes and bread mixes and pancake mixes. And it's from a company called Glue Freegan. They're gluten-free, soy-free, nut-free, egg-free, sugar-free. And these are mixes that people who are gluten-free can use to make certain things like the scotties and pancakes and cakes and breads. And this is from a friend of mine. Her name is Joanne Riley. She actually owns the Interior Edge. She helped me design my home so many years ago when we built this. And her sister, Donna Lynn Riley, has this website where she sells these baking mixes. So she sent them to me and I am not gluten-free, so I don't ever usually cook gluten-free. So I took a look at these mixes. I took a look at her recipes that she sent me. I went on her website. It's G-L-U capital F-R-E-E-G-A-N, Glue Freegan. If you do www.gluefreegan, you will come up with this website and they have a marvelous amount of products that you can look through if you happen to be gluten-free. So I just thought that was so super nice of her to think of me and to show me that I can help people who are gluten-free still enjoy some of my treats that I make. So I decided to actually try one today and I'll show you what I decided to do with it. Remember when I did the um, Pancakes Pancakes book a couple days ago? There was actually a pancake mix in there and I used it. And these are gluten-free pancakes. I just followed the um, directions that were on the back of the package. So if you ever wanna do that, if you wanna say, oh, I wanna make those animal pancakes, but I can't eat regular pancakes because I'm gluten-free, then you can maybe pick up one of her mixes and try that. They sell gluten-free everywhere, but this seems to be a really, really nice website with a lot of different things in it. So then I needed a book to go with it. I had no books about gluten-free, so I went online, did a little bit of research, and I found this really cute one called Gluten-Free Ghouls. And I do remember now when I used to do Books and Cooks back at Anna Reynolds a couple years ago, anytime I wanted to do a recipe, I had to make sure that I could, if I did it the regular way, I could also do it the gluten-free way or the egg-free way or the... Um, sugar-free way for certain kids who had certain allergies because our rule was everybody got to partake in what I was doing or I wasn't able to do it at all. So I found a way to make a recipe that if you're gluten-free, you'll be able to eat the treat at the end. And if you're not gluten-free, you'll still be able to eat the treat at the end. So try to enjoy this book called Gluten-Free Ghouls. Maybe you'll learn a little bit something about kids and people who suffer from gluten insensitivity. So here are our ghouls. 
We have Gloppy and Bogey and Tiki and Ofi and Pops and Bonkers, and they're all friends. Written by Paige Lawrence. It's dedicated from anybody who suffers from gluten intolerance. Okay, goes like this. Six hungry green ghouls lived on Allergy Street. Their appetites were huge. These ghouls love to eat. See, they live on Allergy Street. It's really a cute book. It's a rhyming book, so it really lends itself to fluency and phrasing for kids who are practicing that. They put on their bibs and scrambled through town, gulping down everything that wasn't glued down. See that? Let me tell you what they're eating. They're eating like things from the bakery, burgers and fries, hamburgers, the village market, lots and lots of more of those things we might call a little more of those junk foods. They knocked over trash cans as soon as night fell and dove into dumpsters despite the bad smell. They're like eating pizzas and breads and cookies, anything that was dumped into those dumpsters. I see some fruit in there too though, but this even says sugary snacks. They swam through leftovers and swatted at flies in search of pizza and their favorite pies. They ate soggy spaghetti and crusty old bread. They fill up their bellies and then stroll into bed. Look at all that stuff they were eating. Okay, so they just ate anything. They didn't really care what was in it. Uh-oh, now they don't look so good. It was nonstop feasting on all sorts of junk, but then one day they fell into a funk, meaning they didn't feel so good. See that? Must be from all that junk food. Or even some of the healthier foods that just happen to have that protein gluten in it. Gloppy the ghoul was covered in red blotches and Tiki's big belt had run out of notches. And then there was burping as loud as thunder. This odd behavior made Pop start to wonder. And they were burping and blurping. Burp, burp, burp. This one even has spots on his skin. Some people who are gluten intolerant still get gassy stomachs where their stomach will feel really full and swollen. Some people just get headaches. Other people might get blotches on their skin. You just don't feel good. That's what happens when you have a gluten-free, gluten insensitivity. They all felt lousy and their tummies were sick. Their junk food choices were the wrong ones to pick. Their skin grew itchy, their noses would run. We must see a doctor. This isn't much fun. Maybe you have a friend or someone in your family that when they eat the wrong foods, this is the way they feel. For some people it's egg and some people it's milk and other people it's gluten. So we can all relate to not feeling well after eating something. Their doctor's advice was to read the food labels and replace their dumpsters with dinner tables. There's something called gluten in foods that we eat. It's the protein that's found in barley, rye, and wheat. It's in the cereal we pour into our bowls. It's in pizza, cake, pie, spaghetti, and rolls. It can cause symptoms like the ones that you feel. So choose gluten-free foods when you cook every meal. So if you do eat a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of those breads and pastas and cookies and crackers, and you have a problem with gluten, that would make you not feel so good. But those are delicious, yummy foods. So you just have to be careful to look for gluten-free ones. Or you go to a website and buy some gluten-free mixes and make your own. Um, it says no gluten, read the food labels, and don't go into the dumpsters. Eat at your dinner table. All six hungry ghouls slumped in their chairs, their jaws hung open, and they froze with blank stares. <gasps> no gluten, 
read food labels, replace dumpsters with dinner tables, no diving in dumpsters for tasty delights, no tipping of trash cans on dark starry nights. They're worried that they're gonna miss out on all that fun and all that good food that they used to love to eat. It is a little bit sad when you're told you can't eat something that you like. Burp. Right at that moment, Tiki's belt buckle popped and all that burping still hadn't stopped. Gloppy the ghoul was now scratching like crazy. Bogey and Pops were just tired and lazy. Burp, burp, burp. But they're not feeling very well. Look at his belt just busted open like that because his stomach is all swollen from like gas in it. If you've ever had that feeling, oh, that's not a good feeling at all. I guess that it's time that we follow the rules. These junk food junkies are now gluten-free ghouls. And their pasta even says gluten-free pasta. You can go buy gluten-free pasta. I've seen a lot of things in stores that are gluten-free now. So if you can't have the regular type, just look for something that says gluten-free. And then the author, Paige Lawrence, said there's a website called glutenfreeghouls.com. And you can go there for more information if you want to learn more about recipes or things you could do if you happen to need to start eating a gluten-free lifestyle. All right? So, again, I have these wonderful mixes from bluefreegan.com. Thank you, Joanne Riley, and thank you, Donna Lynn Riley, for sharing these with me. My son has a friend who's gluten-free, so when we've decided when this um, is over and we can have people at our house again, she's going to come over and we're going to try some of these recipes together. And she can teach me some of her gluten-free recipes free recipes. There's a lot of good chicken dishes out there that are gluten-free also. You can always go online and look them up. So anyway, what I decided to do today is show you a gluten-free recipe that I kind of converted from a regular recipe that I normally make. The first thing is they're called cake-covered Oreos. And I remember I once wanted to make these for a classroom, but there were some children in there that couldn't have gluten, and I didn't know at the time how to make it gluten-free because Oreos have gluten, and I use a cake mix, and cake mix had gluten, so I didn't do that recipe with them. But then I realized I used one of the chocolate baking mixes that came from this Glufregan um, website, and I didn't follow the ingredients on the back for this one. I did it the way I, I do it when I use a normal recipe. And I'm gonna show you what I created. It's super cool. So in order to make cake covered Oreos, you really, it's very simple. You need Oreos, okay? So me, I always have like a million different kinds. So I had lemon ones and then I had the regular ones. I had the mint ones. And for, I'm sorry about my nails. They look really terrible right now, but I'm not allowed to get them done. And I had some just regular vanilla Oreos. Okay, those are not gluten-free, but guess what? I went to the grocery store and I went down the gluten-free aisle and they have these called K2s. They are gluten-free, soy-free, nut-free, and dairy-free. So any of those insensitivities can eat these. And let me tell you, they look just like Oreos, and they taste just like Oreos. So I had the Oreo part figured out, right? And then I was like, the, oh, the other thing I need is a cake mix. Well, I didn't have, it could be any flavor. I did not have a gluten-free cake mix, but in that box sent to me, there was a chocolate baking mix that you could make a chocolate cake with. So I said, well, this will be my gluten-free one and this will be my regular one. So I first made the Oreos the way I normally made them, with a regular cake mix, and then I made a batch. 
with the gluten-free. And let me show you how it came out. Okay, so easy, easy, easy. This is a great recipe. It's fun, it's fast, it's um, fun to do with your friends, and then you can always give them away to neighbors or friends. All right, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a cake mix. So I already did the gluten-free one. Let me show you what happened when I mixed it. Uh, it's this one right here, okay? You're, again, if you're good with Play-Doh, you will be good with this recipe. I took the gluten-free cake mix and I dumped it in the bowl and then I added one and a half eggs, two tablespoons of oil, and a little bit of water. And then I did add some sugar to it because I, when I tasted the dough before I added the sugar, it was a little bit bitter to me and I really wanted it to be more sweet. So people who are gluten-free can eat sugar. So I did then add about three or four tablespoons of white sugar and then I rolled it up and it made like this kind of dough. This is the gluten-free one, okay? Then I took a chocolate cake mix, a red velvet cake mix, a Funfetti cake mix. Here was my red velvet one. And I even took a regular chocolate one and I did the same thing. And so let me show you what I, this is the, what the chocolate one, look at this one. This is my regular chocolate cake mix. And this is the gluten-free one made with this. Oops, sorry. Made with this, okay? Came out perfect. They both actually look the same. They taste a little bit different. This one, the regular one's a tiny bit sweeter, but it still works just fine. All right, let me show you what the, um, the Funfetti one, okay? Stuck the Funfetti in the bowl. I added the egg, the little bit of oil, the little bit of water, and it made this. I'm gonna make one for you, so I'll show you how to do this. This was the Funfetti dough. And then I did a red velvet one because I like, when I make these, I like to make a whole bunch. So I took the red velvet cake mix, dumped it into the bowl with the egg, the water, the little bit of oil, and then I turned it into this. Okay, so you're not going to follow the recipe on the box because that would be too soupy. So let me show you what you do. If you want to make cake covered Oreos, are you ready? Take any flavor cake mix. The one I have left now is lemon. I really like this one. So, ready? Into the bowl. Let me see if I could drop this down now. Let me see if you could see the bowl. There it is. All right, let's move everything away. I'm a little bit messy here today, aren't I? It's hard when I don't have my son, TJ, being the cameraman. Okay, so into the bowl goes the cake mix. Super simple, all right? You're going to put <clears throat> two tablespoons, excuse me, of oil. One, two, okay. You're going to put in one beaten egg, okay? So you get an egg in a, in a cup and you beat it up. Now, I said one and a half for the other one because sometimes you need a little more egg, but you won't know that until you try to mix it together. So start with one. So it's cake mix, one egg, the two tablespoons of oil, and now you're gonna start mixing it. Before I add the water, different cake mixes need more or less oil. You just kinda have to play with it, okay? This might not come out perfect for you on your first try. It's kind of like when we made that pasta dough the other day. Start, it seems like it's so super, super dry at the beginning, you know? It's really not that bad. You just gotta give it time. So you've got your glove on and you're mixing. And I, as I'm mixing, I'm squeezing it together, okay? All right, squeezing it together. Now, I already made the gluten-free one, so I'm going with the regular one. But remember, you would have done the same thing with this. You would have dumped it in, the water, the egg, the oil, tried to put it together, and a little bit of sugar. Taste the dough. If it's too bitter, add a little more sugar. I went with three or four tablespoons to make that, okay? All right, so now it looks pretty dry. So now I know it's time to start adding the water. Are you ready? So I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time 
because you can never take it away, but you can always add more. All right, so I add a little bit. Now I want this to be like Play-Doh. I don't want, look at that already. I want it, I don't want it to be too sticky. See, I don't think this one's going to need that extra egg because just that little bit of water is already making it come together for me. Look at, I can feel it, it's perfect. All right, but let me tell you, if by accident, you make it too wet, okay? If you do end up making it too wet, what you can do is, okay, so I'm gonna move the bowl now. See, it came out just like dough. I have one nail that just fell off there. Okay, so this is the gluten-free one. This is the regular one. But if for some reason it was too wet, you can always use extra just a white cake mix like flour and you sprinkle it on the plate it could be always you could use white with any flavor and you would dip it in as if it was flour and then you would just work it into the dough but this one doesn't need any but just in case it was too sticky just dip it in like it was flour and keep working with it until it comes out more like this okay it's not so sticky okay perfect so now we've got the gluten-free chocolate mix, and we also have the regular cake mix. I'm going to make the same recipe, one for kids who can't eat gluten and one for people who can. Here we go. Let me show you what to do. You take any Oreo you want. With lemon, I like to fill it with a lemon Oreo, okay? I take my glove off for this. Wash your hands, remember, and you're not going to be, um, licking your hands or anything while you're doing this. Be super careful to keep your hands away from your mouth. Okay, you rip off a little bit of the dough, okay? This part takes a little bit of practice. So you put some on the top and some on the bottom and you can't press too hard. So be patient with this. Then you start filling in the edges. It does take practice, don't get frustrated if it doesn't come out perfect the first couple of times, just be careful not to press hard. So I kind of like hold top and bottom and I go around and around and I start filling in the sides. You don't want too much. So it's better to use little pieces to make it. You want it to be the shape of a hockey puck, okay? This one's perfect. Then what I do is I roll it along the edge of the table like this, makes the edges and I press it like that. Look at that. It is a cake covered Oreo, okay? That's it. Then I put it on a baking sheet with parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, just spray your baking sheet with a little bit of oil or something. This is the parchment paper. When I made the raviolis last week in the kitchen after I took them off and froze them, guess what? I, froze, I folded up the parchment paper because I'm reusing it. I reuse things in my kitchen all the time. There was no reason to throw it out. There was nothing wrong with it, okay? So then this will go on a baking tray. Let me show you a tray of ones that I just made. Let me show you first. Here's the gluten-free one. So what you would do is you would take the gluten-free Oreo, okay? You wanna make the same thing. This one's gonna be chocolate, right? And this is where you get creative because you can use any Oreo you want for any filling. And you would put a little on the front, little on the back, be careful, go slowly, be, take your time. This is something you wanna be sitting down for. It's great to do on a rainy afternoon and make a whole bunch of them at once because they last in your refrigerator for a long time. But I'm also gonna show you how you can bag them up for friends, okay? And look at that. So I put it off, just make sure the whole Oreo is covered. It's like you're playing with molding clay. Okay, again, I roll it on the side between my fingers and I'm really just trying to make it the shape of a little hockey puck. It's completely covered. So now we've got the gluten-free one. And where that, here we go. And then, and the regular one. It doesn't matter, okay? So the gluten-free people are gonna be able to eat the same thing as the regular people. All thanks to that wonderful chocolate gluten-free baking mix and my K2s. All right, let me show you a whole tray that I just made. Look at these. Look at these. 
Oh my gosh, this one's too many. So I have red velvet. And I have different Oreos in all of these. So they're, they some have um, the mint ones, some have chocolate, some have vanilla, some have lemon. This was with the, um, what was that? Funfetti, the Funfetti right there. This is just my regular chocolate. And then this one was my gluten-free right there. Okay, what you do now is you put your oven on 350 degrees and you literally bake these for like five to six to seven minutes, really short. What's going to happen is you keep your eye on them, they're not going to brown. They're going to come out and you'll be able to touch them and they'll be super, super soft and squishy, but it won't be runny in any way. That's when you wanna take them out and you want them to cool. So let me show you what they look like you get them out of the oven. Once they're baked, they look like this. Okay, I already baked a tray. I then drizzled, after they were cooled, some white chocolate on the top, just because I always think it looks prettier. I always told you, you eat with your eyes, and it looks a lot prettier when you um, just make the top look nicer once it comes out, all right? Now, what I tend to do is, because I don't know what's inside of them all, I like to mix them up, is I don't usually keep them whole when I serve them. I cut them in half, so I wanna show you. This was the gluten-free one, okay? So it came out looking like this, and then I cut it in half. Oh, I used gluten-free, but this time I used the um, not gluten-free Oreo, just because I wanted you to see the chocolate in the middle. So the gluten-free person cannot eat that, but a regular person can still eat the gluten-free one, right? That's not a problem. Uh, here it was. This was with the, with the uh, K2 Oreo, right here. There it is, the one with the K2 Oreo. It had a chocolate Oreo with white filling. That's the gluten-free one, 100% gluten-free, okay? Then, so I made a whole bunch of those and I keep those separate, all right? Now this was the Funfetti one. This had the lemon in the middle. This one I made with the regular Oreo in the middle. This one I made with the, lem with the white Oreo, white frosting Oreo in the middle. Then let's look at this one. Red velvet with a regular Oreo. Red velvet with a chocolate Oreo. And let's try this one. Regular chocolate with a regular Oreo. The regular chocolate mix with a lemon Oreo. And the regular, this is my favorite. The, oops, sorry. The chocolate mix with the mint Oreo. Now, if I could find these K2s in mint, then I could use that other um, gluten-free chocolate batter and a gluten-free mint Oreo. But I, they only had that one at the store I was at. But I'm sure if you went online, you'd be able to find it. Okay, then what you do is you get a bag or something. You're gonna give these away. All right, this is the best way to serve these. If you're not eating them all by yourself, you could keep all the gluten-free ones separate and hand those to someone who's gluten-free. That's one way to do it. Or you could just mix them. You can mix the gluten-free with the regular ones and you just throw them in a bag. And I like to cut them in half because then I feel like people can see what they're eating. Oh, I want the lemon one. Oh, I want the regular one. And you can count just so many per bag. And you put them in a nice little baggie like this. And you get a nice little ribbon, okay? Tie it up. Put a nice little bow on it. And what I do is I keep all cards that people give me and I rip the front off always because I can use this as a note card. And this one happens to say, thinking of you on St. Patrick's Day. So I'm gonna cut that part off. And then I'm just gonna use this as my note card. I'm gonna write a really nice note. And then I might attach it to here and I can put it in someone's mailbox or on their doorsteps. You might even put a little wipe with it if you can. And that's how you can make either a gluten-free Oreo, cake-covered Oreo, or a regular Oreo. And the gluten-free people and the regular people can all share the same snack. So isn't that a great activity to do with your kids or with your moms and your dads? So I made a huge mess here. I hope you try this recipe. And I hope if you are gluten-free, you're not afraid to go on to glufregan.com and try some of those mixes. 
and see if maybe you could do gluten-free pancakes, gluten-free cakes, gluten-free breads. Give it a try. You don't have to go without. You just have to improvise and get creative. Until next time, happy reading and happy cooking.